stop the FOMO. Do you have a fear of missing out on the best 2020 TV deals on Prime Day, Black Friday, or even the holidays or post-holiday sales? Today, we're going to go over the TV models you should pay attention to when looking for deals and some of the pitfalls with these sales. You got to be careful. So I'm going to break up this video into a couple of themes that you could jump around based on your interest. But generally speaking, my goal is to identify what I think are the best value deals, because obviously, if you have the money, you're just going to get the best TV you could afford, right? But that's not always the case. Just because you're paying more does not mean you're getting a better TV. So with that out of the way, this is what we're going to talk about today. First, there are some TV models that will not have huge discounts regardless. So if you could find a deal in the next few weeks or months, get it while you can, only because waiting around doesn't change anything. They end up staying within $100 of their current prices today. Kind of weird, huh? We'll go over those TVs next. Beware of huge discounts from certain TV brands and models because this is how they game the system to get your attention. We'll go over those models. And lastly, my selection for the models to get because these will have the most discounts moving forward. And even if you get it at slightly more than you expected, they're still great TVs. We're talking about picture quality. We'll go into gaming at the very end. Oh, that's another thing I want to talk about is at the very end, we'll talk about gaming considerations. And this year, to me, it's kind of unique and it's very special. So if you're interested in gaming features, wait till the very end. And we're going to talk about how you should consider that in the context of your TV buying experience. Okay, so let's jump into those TV models where whether you buy it today, tomorrow, or in three months, the discounts, minimal, 10% at most. And there are two models that I have in mind. And it's pretty consistent. This last year, same thing. It's the TCL 6 Series and the Hisense H9G. If you look at their 2019 models, the TCL R625 or the H9F from Hisense, from the beginning of its launch in 2019 to the end of its production cycle, the prices didn't discount greatly, right? Not like Vizio, where it starts at this price and by the end, it's like 40% cheaper. The Hisense and the TCL, these models specifically, they aggressively priced it from day one. So for example, the H9G, my personal choice for one of the best TVs you can get HDR movies, and we'll go over my favorites at the very end, right? But the H9G, if you can get it $50 off, just buy it. Why? If you wait three months, it's unlikely it'll be significantly discounted beyond that if we look at its history. The H9F, by the time its production run was over, there were that many discounts and it was always sold out anyway. Look at the 2019 TCL 6 Series, right? It's still $800. And this is like a year later, right? So with these two models, if you have these models in mind, whatever discounts you could find, go for it because you're not going to miss out on bigger deals. Whatever deals you can get today, most likely will be probably good enough moving forward for the next eight months or so. And next, I'd like to talk about some of the pricing tricks that get consumers to pay attention and buy the TVs when in fact, there's a better TV out there that probably is cheaper still. And we'll start with Samsung. Man, these guys are good at what they do. So suddenly, if you look at the Q60T and the Q70T, Wow, look at those discounts. They're now under $1,000 and it used to be over $1,000. And I'm going to run in and get it. <laughs> well, the reality is the Sony X900H is also under $1,000 now. And it's the 65 inch, as a matter of fact, or just at $1,000, right? X900H to me has always been the better deal than the Q60T or the Q70T. As a matter of fact, it's actually significantly better. This is what it should have been priced at from the beginning, but because they overpriced it, they were waiting for Prime Day, Black Friday, and the holidays to bring it down, to give you that, wow, what a great deal. I'm going to rush in and get it. So back to the tricks they play on you, right? Samsung starts the launch off at a very high Price. As a matter of fact, the price is so high, I believe it, it's not even close to representing its true value. And, and Sony does this trick as well. By Prime Day this week, suddenly 
the Q70T and the Q60T is priced competitively with the Sony X900H. What does that tell you? It tells you that those are overpriced to begin with. Between the three TVs, if you put them side by side, the Sony X900H will beat them 9 out of 10 times. Better HDR performance, better motion, and brighter. And if you live in regions that have the TCL6 series or H9G available, I would choose those two before I choose the X900H. But at the very end, I'll discuss some of the drawbacks of the H9G that you need to understand. And speaking of accurate pricing, let's get into the actual deals right now. I believe that these two TVs are real values today because of their pricing adjustment. For just under a thousand, let's just say a thousand dollars. My choice as the best bang for the buck right now, definitely the Samsung RU9000 75 inch for about a thousand dollars. To me, that's amazing. Even the TCL R635 is fourteen hundred dollars, and it brings to the table that HDR quality that I'm so impressed with. But if you don't really watch critically, right? You're not in a dark room and you're not focused on the HDR performance and you're okay with slightly raised blacks. I don't think you could do better than the RU9000. And how confident am I? Well, to me, the RU9000 is very similar to the Nano 90. They both have similar criticisms, slightly dim, HDR, not as impactful, but they both have gaming features, right? And yet the RU9000 is now half the cost of the Nano 90, 75 inches. The Nano 90, 75 inch is $2,000. The RU9000 is 1000 This is an unbelievable deal, in my opinion. So if your budget is 1000 and you want to scratch the best 75-inch TV you can get for $1,000 today, you got to go with the 2020 RU9000 by Samsung. I just think you'll love that TV for $1,000. Sure, there are better TVs for 1000 but that's a 65-inch size. If you need 75-inch and you're okay with just a drop down in HDR performance, but if you want some HDR at 75 inches, the $1,400 TCL R635, no-brainer, right? So it really comes down to those TVs. Now, the TCL, mind you, you're not going to see much of a discount. But like I said in the beginning, these TVs don't get discounted. So if you get any discount at all, go for it. But don't rush into it because the deals aren't really there. And so that's why I'm not going to focus too much on the R635. At $1,400, it's going to be $1,400 next month and the month after. <laughs> and the month after that, maybe $1,300, right? So if you see the R635 drop at any level, go for it. If you have your eye on the 75-inch R635. Otherwise, the $1,000 RU9000, such a solid deal. If you can get it for under $1,000, RU9000, Samsung, that's my choice for the best 75-inch budget buy this season. I compare the Hisense H9G with the best. Its HDR performance is so good. But now for the caveat, before you rush out and buy it, listen to this first. So the Hisense H9G, before any firmware updates, it's an amazing HDR beast. Especially once you calibrate it, it is worthy of any critical movie watching experience that you may have in mind. However, if you firmware update this thing, right, then your experiences may vary depending on when you update it. If you update it today, you may have a problem because it added a bit of blooming. It's a lot brighter. There's some red motion blur issue. I mean, this firmware update, I think, kind of broke the H9G. But again, if there's another update tomorrow or next week and maybe it fixes it, Okay, great. We're back to square one. So my caveat is this. If you do get the H9G, the way I have it set up, there's no firmware update. Perfect. And I've had no problems, by the way. I do not need the firmware update. I've been using this to compare, and it's fully calibrated. I've been using the H9G to compare with all the other TVs, right? This LG C10, the Q900TS, the Sony X900H, the Vizio OLED, the TCL R635, 
and the Hisense H9G after calibration more than holds its own. As a matter of fact, it is better in the dark than any of these TVs short of the LG C10 and the Q900TS for literally five times more, right? So that's why I believe the Hisense H9G is worthy of your consideration as long as you keep that caveat in mind. Do not connect it to the internet. Use Apple TV, use your NVIDIA Shield, use your Roku, use your Chromecast, use an external plug-in device to get all your streaming. But do not update the H9G until their next firmware update fixes everything and reviewers like myself or others can confirm that the update has brought the H9G back to the level it was without the update. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, if you enjoyed this content and you love the way I talk about TVs and buying guides and comparisons and reviews, please subscribe because you know what's coming. CES 2021. Oh yeah, I can't wait for coverage there. All these new models. Finally, maybe gaming will be a real thing for TVs. Who knows, right? And finally, let's talk about gaming considerations, right? Next-gen console, PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, even the RTX 3000 NVIDIA Ampere cards. You want your TV to handle all of this. At a high level, <laughs> this is a mess this year. And let me tell you why. This HDMI 2.1, gaming features, all the buzzwords like FreeSync, FreeSync Premium, VRR, and of course, HDMI 2.1 with 48 gigabits per second, 40 gigabits per second. What's the difference? Okay. Generally speaking, the only TV this year that we can say is a serious gaming TV would be the LG C10. And even then, it's going through its growing pains going through validation. I mean, basically, we're all beta testers because they couldn't beta test it. They couldn't validate HDMI 2.1, whether it was working or not, because there were no devices to validate with. Only now, in the last month, have we seen AVRs with 2.1 being released. Are we getting the cards, RTX 3000 with 2.1? There are no next-gen consoles to validate with yet. We don't even know if any of these TVs will properly work. None of these TVs have been tested with the PlayStation 5 or the Series X. You guys are hoping and assuming that you're going to have to skip the first adopter pain. You're not going to do that. So in these recommendations that I have, my priority is image quality. If the gaming feature is being promised, ends up working at all, more power to you. But at this point, I'm going to assume they will all have problems. And that includes the Sony X900H. Remember, the Sony X900H requires a firmware update. That means if Sony doesn't ever get you that update or 2022, you get the update. So for the last two years, you just have a regular TV. Then you would have said, wait a minute, if it's just a regular TV. I should have just gotten the H9G. Well, that's my point. Focus on image quality. And if you're a serious gamer, then consider a gaming monitor. Now, the LG C10, their engineering team is actively working on making it work as a gaming monitor because that's how they've been promoting it and their reputation rides on that. But it doesn't mean they'll fix everything, right? I mean, they're fixing a few things. And of course, Vizio, just broadly speaking, the longer you wait, the more pricing will drop. So this being a video about getting the best deals, I don't believe Vizio is a best deal right now. It is still so close to its launch date of just last month in September. Not worth getting a Vizio if you're looking for the best deal. Okay, I think I've covered everything. But until next time, stop the FOMO.